Hey there, I'm Garrett from UVI, and you're tuned in to Making a Track with Vintage Vault 2. Today, we're going to take a look at a song created by our own Louis Kuka using only Vintage Vault 2, our premier vintage synth and drum machine collection. To show you some of its potential, we're going to break down his song piece by piece, going through some of our favorite features, tips and tricks, hidden gems, and his thought process behind the song. Let's start with the rhythm section. To establish the right vibe for the song, we need drums that can support a good groove, so we've used the tried and tested 4 on the floor pattern. That's a kick drum on every beat or quarter note, and a snare on the 2 and 4. This kick doesn't need much work, it's a great sound right out of the box. We EQ'd it slightly to make the sound a little rounder by boosting the sub frequencies to make it stand out a bit more in the mix. Moving on to the snare, we'll go with another stock sound from BBA2, this time a drumulator sample. This one has a nice full tone and makes a great complement to the kick. Again, we don't need much processing here. We just added a bit of EQ, boosting the mids around the fundamental to give it some emphasis and the highs to make it more crisp. The samples have great character already, so we're just focused on making the sounds sit well together, giving each one its own space. To help give the drums some extra punch, let's take a look at the 80s layer. Here we've got a second kick and snare track that will aggressively compress and then lightly mix on top of our existing drums to give the rhythm section some extra snap. Similar to the idea of parallel compression, but with a twist. We'll choose a kick and snare from the SMS tricks and filter out the low end to avoid phase problems with the existing sounds. We want to emphasize the punch of this track, so we've gated the kick and snare to make them short and snappy. Mixing these on top of our existing kick and snare gives us a rich, more dynamic sound that will also help them cut through the mix later on. Next, we mix in an open hi-hat pattern. This time, we've used samples from the Ace T1. The drum fills arrive to mark time in the song or signal a change of parts. We pick the preset 2 beats fill 17 and use slight variations of this pattern throughout the song. To fill out the rhythm and add more movement, we grabbed a couple of percussion loop presets. We slightly edited their patterns by simply erasing and drawing in new notes for certain elements in the sequencer, which is then launched via MIDI. To give the loops a more natural feeling, we added some swing to the rhythms via the groove parameter on the right. You can also access all of the panning, mixing, and effects that are already applied to the individual tracks here on the left of the UI. You can mute or solo tracks as well, like we did with the crash here. Next up, we have our slap bass track, which we built off of this slap funk preset in Cameo CZ, which has a great lo-fi digital vibe. Here's a little tip for finding specific sounds in Vintage Vault 2 or any UVI libraries. Open the browser in UVI Workstation and click the search bar, then simply type in some words describing what you're looking for. Here we just typed slap and immediately we can see all of the available slap sounds in our collection. Again, minimal tweaking to settings here. We made minor adjustments to the ADSR filter to get the shape we wanted for this track and added a small amount of EQ and compression. To get that pumping dance feeling out of this bass, we went with a rather quick attack and a slow release in the compressor. The guitar part was achieved using a patch called Finger Jazz Chorus from Emulation 2. This patch has a funky 80s vibe that fits perfectly with what we're after. If we go under the hood in UVI Workstation in the FX tab, you can see that we added a few more effects to get the final sound we wanted. First is Guitar Box. It runs your sound through various IRs of guitar cabinets similar to reamping, so it's perfect for this track. Next, a bit of compression and some reverb that really gives this sound some more dimension. Another trick we did on the guitar was delay layering. Here, we've used the AUX1 track for some parallel processing. First, we feed the guitar's signal into two different delays, which creates a rich sound with some great detail. Then, we add an EQ to filter out the body of the treated sound and isolate the higher frequencies. This helps us achieve a cleaner mix. If you wanted to send any other instruments or sounds through this too, you could without any additional cost to your CPU. It's particularly useful for reverbs and delays. We just happen to only need it for this one track though. For our pad sound, we went with the Chromanist pad from Chroma, which you can find in our Vintage Legends library. To give it an even lighter sound, we filtered out the bass fairly aggressively. 
Since this EQ has a max slope of minus 12 decibels an octave, we've stacked three of them together to create a minus 36 decibel octave filter. The phaser synth arrives in after the pads, adding some extra depth and texture. The sound is also from Chroma, using the 80 stab preset. In comparison with the pad sound, this patch is more rhythmically dynamic. We're using the same bass chords here too, but with a different voicing. This creates some nice variation. Here, you can see how we configured this patch. Looking at the amplitude envelope, an attack setting of zero was used with a small sustain and the right decay to give it a percussive sound that helps emphasize its rhythm. To polish it off, we've added a phaser effect for more dimension. Looking at the effects tab, we can see that the phaser is maxed out at 100%, running at a slow rate with a maximum spread on the delay for a nice wide sound. It's important to note that while you can add as many effects as you want to UVI instruments, you shouldn't delete the factory effects. Doing so can break the script and cause other problems. If you don't want to use a certain effect, simply bypass it. Bypassed effects don't use any CPU cycles, so they won't negatively affect your computer's performance. The next element we're going to add is the main melody. If that tone reminds you of something or someone in particular, perhaps its name will give you a hint. The ever so slyly named Path Dunk Patch can be found in 612, one of the instruments in OB Legacy. This sound is right out of the box with only minor cuts in EQ around 2 kHz to make it smoother. After, we bring in another lead to change it up. It is another artist inspired patch in 612. Kenry Hori. We'll let you funk themes decipher who that one could possibly be about. Again, we didn't change anything here from the preset. It's really just perfectly funky, and by carving out some space at 2 kHz, it fits smoothly into our mix. Let's check out some of the secondary elements of this song. First, the voice. This has a very 80s sound to it, perfect for this track. Here, we're using it about every four measures and at transitions to mark changes in the track. This patch can be found in Emulation 2 under the Hits and Voices folders. Really what gives it that sense of being so epic though is the reverb. Back in the Effects tab by right clicking this title bar, we can see all of the types of reverb on offer in UVI Workstation. There's both Algorithmic Options in the Reverberation folder and Impulse Responses in the IR Verb folder. In this case, we're using an IR reverb called Cathedral Organ. To give it more atmosphere, we've used a few sound effects throughout the track. You can hear this one come in right before the voices. Another Emulation 2 patch called Pigs in Space, it's got a terrific vintage vibe. The effect that comes right after is another preset we pulled from the Beast. It's called Space Chimes and it has a great glassy shimmer to it. These two effects add to the build of the song while keeping the melody and rhythm clear. Well, that's all as far as sounds go in our song. Let's talk a little bit about automation. Looking at the bottom of the screen here in Cubase, we can see a sidechain track. All of the melodic parts of our song are being rooted into it. It is simply automating the volume of the tracks so that every quarter note their levels dip, making space for the kick. Mainly, this avoids any phasing or muddiness between our kick drum and bass. Also, it gives a nice pumping effect popular in electronic music. Here, we even drew in the automation by hand rather than using a traditional compressor to achieve this effect. I find it quite easy and flexible to do it this way, but to each their own. Another subtle effect that Louis has automated across various tracks is a filter cutoff. They're set to open and close little by little, providing a nuanced sense of progression. The small change in tonality keeps the sound from becoming static. That's all we have time for today. We hope you enjoyed the music and sounds of Vintage Vault 2 as well as learn something new that you can put to use in your own productions. For detailed information on Vintage Vault and more, check out the link in the description below. And let us know what you'd like to see more of in this video series. Feel free to tell us your ideas in the comments section. So, I'll leave you with this song, and until next time.
Yeah.